yards. And we're on. So yeah, Friday, what happened with that? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it was interestingly timed when they showed up. Um, obviously, it was designed to throw our plans to attend White Ribbon out the window. Uh, when we ended up down on the footpath over there and you were being um, dragged off, mm. I was following you with a camera asking why you were being arrested and uh, police officer Cameron Nugent uh, came up on the side of me, so I had the camera like that, he came up on the side and he shoved me and then he backhanded me um, across my cheekbone. And I'm just, I, I'm actually kind of grateful that he um, pushed me first, otherwise I would have gone full throttle into his arm. Um, someone that was walking down the side saw it and started screaming, get your hands off her. Mm. And then when I tried to get his name badge, he knocked my arm and the camera out, down like that. Mm. And then he, he got sort of into dealing with you. So I looked around and I saw his name. So mm. I knew who he was, but yeah. So that was just before we went up and did our great, silent, respectful action. Um, and how did the silent uh, action go? It was amazing. It was so amazing. Uh, we were so uh, focused on simply standing still. We were gagged with white ribbon. And as the protest came in, they people were peeling off and coming over to see and women were doing this and peace signs to us and saying, good on you. And um, by the end of it, there were some people that were walking along looking at all the photos that were crying, both men and women. What, what were the photos? The photos were uh, blown up photos of uh, women and youths being dragged out of the city square on the 21st of October. Um, you know, it's like less than a month ago and, and, and here we have the Lord Mayor um, who was supposed, who's an ambassador for White Ribbon Day. Um, you know, he didn't show up for the march. Uh -huh. You know. Um, but it was very powerful and, and I think it, it really showed the women that were walking um, that we were being respectful and, and that violence doesn't just happen individually in the home. Mm. It happens to us collectively in society when we dare to speak out and stand up for each other. and. Um, and that's what's going on in Melbourne at the moment. It's mm. it's it's really scary and it's mm. insane. Yeah. Well, what's happening? Speaking of at the moment, what's happening with the uh, Egyptian rally? So um, we were expecting the police back here again uh, for a repeat of council workers and police behaving badly. Mm. Uh, so half of us went off to support the Egyptian rally, and obviously that is about. Uh, people being killed and gassed with a new type of gas. It's not the same gas they were using. Interestingly, that gas is manufactured in America of course and, it is. and sold to the military regime that are now using it on their population who are demanding change and the end to military rule. So uh, half of us have gone off down that way and the rest of us are waiting here to pick up the tents and um, play a bit of cat and mouse with the police if they show up. So we think again it was very well timed to prevent us from fully participating in the Egyptian rally. Uh, so these tactics are, you know, the kind of tactics you would expect by an authoritarian regime. Uh, and what we're actually experiencing is a local council doing this to the population at the expense of taxpayers and which I'm one of, I work, so yeah. So here we are again and we will continue to do this and play this game until they understand we have a right to actually uh, protest and occupation is a legitimate form mm. of protest. You only have to look at the tent embassy in Canberra, it's been there for 40 years yeah. on Parliament's grass. Yeah. <laughs> Robert Burns Memorial and an ornamental pond with a monument to